Hello, and welcome to Will Wright's Book. This used to be called Will Wright's Books, and I was going to write 11 books this year, similar to my Kilo Tube you know, video challenge. I had something which almost would be a baker's dozen book challenge, and for a similar motivation. Um, the motivation was, well... I seem to be getting stuck writing, not writing, you know, fear of writing, perfectionism, not finishing. So by trying to write 11 books, one per month, and submitting those somehow, either self-publishing or submitting those to, to a press, academic or commercial press, um, under some open source sorry, oh, uh, Creative Commons license, I was hoping that I would get myself kind of out of this rut where I'd start a book and then you know, make some progress and then get frustrated and throw it all away. And, uh, you know, sort of the arc of, of Will Wright's books was, you know, okay, let's uh, come up with a challenge. Let's start on a book, which was on creativity, creative thinking, and so forth. And then, oh yeah, let's start thinking about some other books. So the second book is The Most Beautiful Program Ever Written. And let's start writing. And of course, what happened was, as soon as I started writing, this old nemesis of wrist pain and finger pain and elbow pain you know, reared its head once again. Um, I was hoping I could kind of just type through it, but I didn't really want to destroy my arms and have to get surgery or whatever, or stop writing. So, took a step back, got ergonomic keyboard and all sorts of setup. I've got a bunch of videos on that. Right now I've got a setup that's pretty good. And I made a bunch of videos with me just trying to learn Dvorak and typing notes to myself, making a little progress on the first book. And in the last week, as I mentioned in the Will Radio, I haven't made any videos, like for six days or something. A long time. Um, and, you know, it's for a variety of reasons. Uh, and I was getting a little burned out because I was having logistical problems making videos. But in any case... During that time period, I got to reflect a little bit about, okay, well, what do I really want to do with the writing? And, you know, what do I care about? What would I actually want to produce? I've also been reading a whole lot, okay, and uh, about writing. So, first of all, I feel like these videos have helped me get unstuck because I was stuck in two ways. I was stuck in that I wasn't working on a book and I was afraid to sort of talk publicly about the writing and all that. And, and, and just in terms of the logistics, I was stuck in terms of, you know, I, I was going to have to sit in front of a computer and type a certain number of hours to get a book out the door, unless I did speech recognition you know, speech to text or handwriting to text or something like that, which I've played around with and I just, I haven't gotten them to work to my satisfaction. So it involves typing or I could try dictation or something. I, but, you know, I, I think really typing is what I need to do. So I feel like I'm unstuck in a way because now I'm starting to learn Dvorak. Like what you see on the screen, I actually type that. Um, not quickly, but I'm, I'm definitely improving and I don't have wrist pain as long as I wear my wrist compression things and all that. Okay. So I can type probably at least an hour a day if I take breaks every 15 minutes. And, you know, that's part of the core competency is day nine would say, if you want to write a book, you just have to spend a certain amount of time in front of a keyboard typing. So that part I'm I think I'm unstuck and I've spent a fair amount of time thinking about what I want to write. Uh, however, as I mentioned in the Will Radio, I was feeling stuck in that I had tied 
the writing of the books to making videos. And because I was having logistic issues uh, with making the videos, I just wasn't writing. So I didn't write for the last six days. Um, so that, that was another way to get stuck. And like, so, well, I need to get unstuck from that one. That's where the videos are, are hurting, not helping. Um, so I've been thinking, well, what do I do? And also I've been thinking about what do I actually want to write about? That first book in the list of 11 on the creative strategies, it's not like I don't care about those creative strategies. I do. And it's not like I don't think I could write a book on those strategies. I think I could. And I actually honestly think that that book would be as good as basically any of the books written on them because most of the books I think aren't, aren't, aren't very good. Um, so, you know, and I might still write that. However, when I think about what I really like and what I, you know, the books I love that really had a big impact on me, certainly, you know, given how much I love Scheme, there are things like uh, SICP by Abelson and Sussman. You know, that book is great. Or, you know, uh, Kent's book, uh, The Scheme Programming Language. Even the R6RS report. And... You know, Dan Friedman's little books, uh, one of which I was, you know, able to to be a co-author of for two editions. Uh, things like that, those really have affected me uh, deeply. And then there are other books like Types and Programming Languages by Pierce. Um, you know, I could I can mention others, but there there are certain books that are just classics now in programming, programming languages, scheme programming. You know, these are books that I recommend to people, that other people recommend to people. You know, these are the books that, it's not like I wish I had written those books, but those are books that I respect in a certain way, even as I acknowledge the limitations and flaws in each of these books, because none of them are perfect. And, you know, there, there are certain uh, audiences that they're they're really geared towards and, each one is making uh, a bunch of decisions about the reader and and the reader's uh, level and things like that. You know, there's no one perfect book for everyone. Uh, even understanding those limitations and and uh, compromises that were made to to write the books, you know, I still have a lot of respect for those. And you know, I I want to write something like that you know, like those books, like not, not necessarily in terms of top uh, topic or format, but you know, that, that sort of book, you know, something, something that other people would want to point people to is like, Oh, you want to learn this thing. That's really cool. Or you want to, you know, it, here's something worth reading that will open your eyes or change your perspective on what programming is or about computation or whatever it is, okay? Um, something where I have something to say, you know, a topic where I have something to say. I was talking with a friend the other day who was very interested in the history of the development of the SICP course 6.001 at MIT. And, you know, he, he was pointing to an interview, I don't, it's either with Abelson or Sussman um, talking about the course and talking about how when Abelson and Sussman were teaching 6001, it was a stronger course than when other people took over and started teaching it because Abelson and Sussman had something important that they wanted to communicate. You know, they had earned this knowledge directly you know, for example, that course is taught in Scheme, or was taught in Scheme, and the book is written in Scheme, and, you know, Jerry Sussman is one of the co-creators of Scheme. So, you know, that was hard-earned knowledge, and the topics they pick, and talking about fixed points, and all these sorts of things, these are topics dear to their heart, their hearts. Um and, and it's, it's only, you know, that was the sort of book that only they could have written that book 
other people could have written books that maybe were, would have been just as good or even better in some ways, but it would have, those would have been very different books, right? So that was a unique book in the same way that you know, Dan Friedman's little books really are unique books. Um, and, and I will say, I think the, the reason schemer, um, that book has a, a certain perspective and point of view. Uh, although I'll also say that given the work, you know, I've been interested in and have worked on and, uh, with many other people in the last 18 to 20 years, you know, there are a lot of things that don't really fit in the format of that little book that I would like to share about relational programming, for example, and relational interpreters and program synthesis using that approach and the connection with the metacircular interpreter. Um, and so I gave that talk, the, the most beautiful program ever written, uh, that, you know, that was by far the most popular talk that I've given. Partly, I'm guessing because of, of the, um, you know, the fact that it's on an official channel for papers we love. But I think that's only a, a relatively small part of it. I think part of it, it was, you know, I think that was sort of the, the ultimate realization in talk form of what I was trying to show at that time. Um, so it just worked out well. And, and clearly I had something that I cared about that I was talking about that was important to me. Um, and so when I was thinking of these different book topics, you know, that is a book, a book on the most beautiful pro, uh, program ever written. That's a book that I think only I could write. No one else in the world could write that book the way I would. It's not that no one else has something to say about the topic, but any book I would write, if I write it, you know, as well as I can, um, is going to be unique to me because I have a unique perspective. Even with the people I work with, we have a lot of overlap, but I'm going to have a perspective that's at least a little bit different. And so that appeals to me to write that book. Now, whether or not there's any other book for which I have the same amount of feeling of I have something to say that's, um, that I really believe in that's important to me, I don't know. There, there probably are other things that I'd like to write about. Uh, but that one in particular, and, and also just the fact that it seemed to strike a nerve with people, right? There was like, um, the fact that people responded to it, you know, I, I think that was partly a reflection of, you know, not only these topics really interesting, but the fact that I, I did have something I wanted to say, I think that came through. So that's actually the book I want to work on. Um, you know, so, Lots of other things I could write, um, but I want to. I want to tr- see if I can and write something here. the The other thing I was thinking about is, for the videos I've been making, maybe it would make sense to make a series of videos on the most beautiful program ever written, because I there are a lot of topics I, I introduce, and I can only, you know give two to five minutes for each topic, some of which deserve entire courses um, for those topics. And so maybe it makes sense to make a a YouTube series to go with it or a video series to go with it. And then maybe either those series, those videos, making those videos might help me with the book or maybe the book becomes a companion or you know, maybe the book comes out as a product of making those those videos, and then maybe I make another series of videos uh, once I've made the book. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. It could be some sort of mutually recursive uh, process. But that's the other thing that that I realize. Like, oh, okay, that would be kind of interesting to do a video series um, about those topics. I, you know, with my uncourses in the past. Obviously, I touched on a bunch of those topics, but uh, it'd be interesting to 
to do something that mirrored more closely the structure of that talk. It'd also be pretty challenging because, you know, that has several years worth of computer science uh, courses wrapped into the one 90 minute talk. But anyway, that's what I would like to write about. I would like to write a, bu a book on the, you know, the, the topic of the greatest uh, program ever written. And that could be the, t the title of the book as well. You know, uh, the, the fact that a number of people wrote blog post entries after that talk came out, um, that also just tells me that, you know, so somehow uh, that, that excited people, because that's, that's really what I care about is not just showing techniques that might be interesting or useful to people, but, you know, if there's something that really excites people, and, and this excites me, obviously, that type of topic really excites me. Okay, so that's what I want to write about. Um, as far as writing advice goes, I've been reading a lot of writing advice and advice about creating things. Um, you know, one book... Actually, several books I read. Uh, I am totally blanking on this guy's name. He was a professor of like the classics at Occidental College, where I briefly was a student. Um, uh, I'm I'm blanking on his name. I'm sorry. I have to have to see if I can find these books. Anyway, uh, he you know ended up going to Hollywood and becoming a Hollywood producer for movies. Um, and he's got a number of interesting books that talk about the creative process. And I've seen some very interesting videos, uh, uh, interviews with him on a YouTube channel called Film Courage that interviews filmmakers. Um, I'll have to find the name and put it in the comments, sorry. Anyway, uh, you know, he basically his advice is, you know, you need to structure things so that for the things that you really care about, you want to go for, um, you can work on those things and apply, you know, everything you've got. And he uses the phrase with all your might. Okay. Like this is, you know, not messing around time. Um, and, and I'll say what, when I gave that talk, the most beautiful program ever written, even though I was relaxed while giving it, I certainly wasn't relaxed when preparing for it, but I was relaxed while giving it. You're like, that's as good as I can go. That is, that is I think, you know, at least at the time I gave the talk, that was with all my might. You know, that wasn't, that doesn't mean like I was tense, but, you know, that that was as good as I could have given a talk at that period of time. So uh, I want to write this book in a similar way with all my right might. That doesn't mean, you know, being paralyzed with fear or self-censorship. That just means, you know, I really want to concentrate on it. And I want to tell the story the way I think it needs to be told and and with my perspective and uh, you know with a lot of without a lot of distraction and ceremony and you know I don't know decoration um, there can be some humor in there I think there should be some humor there was definitely humor in the talk um, but that that was something that oh Ken Ken oh totally blanking on this last name Kenneth something. All right, it'll come to me. I'll put it in the chat. Anyway. Um, all right, hold on a second. Let me look this up. Film Courage. Courage. Kenneth. What do we got? Mm -hmm. Come on. Now, oh, here we go. 
Here he is. Here he is. Dr. Ken Achidi. A-T-C-H-I-T-Y. Let me put that in here. Okay, so he's got some, there's some very inter interesting interviews with him on this Film Courage um, YouTube channel. I'll add Film Courage. I have a number of books by him, and I've watched these interviews. I think they're interesting, and I found them inspiring. So anyway, he uses this phrase, with all your might. You know, he also has a book, which I've read, on quitting your day job and living your dreams. Now, I do want to write. Uh, however, I'm an academic, and as an academic, I am a professional writer. So it's not like... I have to quit my day job in order to write. You know, being being able to communicate clearly is at the heart of what I'm doing. So in order to communicate in terms of giving talks, written communication, making videos or whatever, those skills are actually critical to what I do for a living. So, um, you know, if I were working in a warehouse all day, something like that, it'd probably be different. Uh, but I, I am in an occupation where I am required to communicate. So anyway, um, I found found his advice inspiring. And I like this phrase, with all your might. You know, approach whatever it is you want to do that you really care about, that you're the only one who can do with all your might. And I think this is a book that only I could write. The only person in the world who could write that particular book with that particular perspective, and I want to do it with all my might. Um, there are other books I've been reading. Like I think I've mentioned this a number of times. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of them around by uh, Dean Wesley Smith. Uh, he's written over 100 novels, apparently. Or over a hundred books published uh, with conventional publishers, and he's written a zillion other books with his own publishing company and so forth. And I've read his his a bunch of his books. I obviously haven't read them all. I mean, he has books like "Write a Novel in Seven Days," that type of thing. And uh, I found found a number of the things in his books interesting about like how the pulp fiction writers would write, you know, people being paid by the word and the speed at which they'd have to write and, and only doing a single draft. Uh, I, I read the other day that Neil Stevenson only does a single draft for his, his stories. And I also read <laughs> responses to that claim by some people saying, well, it shows in this writing and maybe it does. I don't know. First of all, I don't know if this claim is true, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised because there is a long history of fiction writers doing single drafts. Um, and, uh, you know, that seems to work, work okay for them. In terms of, of taking these pieces of advice to heart, you know, one thing that has come up when I was reading Ken Achety's books or watching the film 
Courage interviews or the Dean Wesley Smith um, interviews. Well, first of all, a lot of this is for fiction. And then the other thing is, well, when I, you know, not to be overly critical, but then when I look at what people are making, do the things that these people are making, do they move me in a way uh, that I want to be moved for the things I care about? And I have to say that in general, the answer is no. Okay. Um, but they are working and they're working professionally and they're making a living doing it. So it's not like they don't have anything to teach me, but at the same time I have to, I think, I think I have to be careful and, and also the advice they give is, of course, you know, you have to decide what's the right thing to do. And so I, I think I can try to take the inspiration from the inspiring parts of, of what I've read and then, you know, for the rest, uh, put that back on the shelf. Um, but the inspiring part is with all your might. The inspiring part with film courage is you can do it. You know, and you can also make make a film. You can make you know, write a script. You can write a book. Um, now, getting your screenplay made into a movie, that's maybe not so easy. That's that's a different thing. But you know, I'm, I am sure I'm capable of writing screenplays better than the worst screenplays that I've seen turned into movies. Okay. That, that might be a, a very low bar, but that's worth knowing that I could write something better than the worst thing I've ever seen on film. I'm so, quite certain of that. Okay, so <clears throat> that's useful. And, and the Dean Wesley Smith, you know, uh, read a bunch of his books. And yeah, I, I, uh, I think it is true that if you are not careful, you can rewrite a fresh story sort of into oblivion. You know, that 90 minute talk I gave. Uh, you know, that was the only time I gave that talk. I, I had given other talks, but it was the only time I gave it in that format. I didn't rehearse it. I just gave it, you know. So in some sense, that was like you know, the first and only take. That was the only time I've ever given that talk and probably the only time I ever will give that talk. You know, one shot at it. Um, so I, I think that's similar. For writing, I will say, I haven't found that to be the case, so at least for short writing, any short writing I've found, I really do have to rewrite it, you know, three to four times before I, I get something I'm happy with. Um, now, if I'm being paid by the word, that'd be different. If I were doing this for a living, that'd be different in terms of, you know, my entire income based on how productive I was writing books. I probably have a very different attitude, but that's not what I want. And, you know, when people look at the little books or they look at something like SICP or TAPL, you know, those books are great. If, if, if you know, SICP were the only book written by Abelson and Sussman, they would still be great writers. That would still be a, a, a super important book in the history of computing and computing education. So, you know, it's, it's just a different situation. Like I, what I want to do is write a book if it's in me. And I think it is, um, that's at that level where, where people would want to read the book, you know, decades from now, at least some people. So that's, uh, you know, a long, a very, very long winded way to say, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. And I want to make a run at this book based on the most beautiful program ever written. And as far as what it means to send that to press, like I said, I want, you know, any, any of the books I'm writing, I want to be under some Creative Commons license. Now, if I did a third edition of The Reason Schemer, that might be different because that book already exists. Um, but even then, I see that MIT Press does have this open access initiative that's new. Um, so even that might be possible to be open access. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I do think that MIT Press might be interested in this uh, most beautiful program ever written project. 
partly because it's in Scheme, and they have a bunch of books in Scheme, and they also have the Mid and Kenrin books, and you know, sort of ties together with the other things they're doing. Um, and also, there seems to be some interest based on the video. So, you know, I, I've been thinking about that uh, approaching MIT Press, or or just writing it, you know, and uh, going to them. I've been reading these books about writing a proposal package and all that, and some of it, I have to admit, really turns me off. But I think for this project, they might care about it. And the fact that I, I'm a co-author of two editions of a book probably helps. So, anyway, um, you know, I'm just trying to figure figure all this out. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I, I feel unstuck in a way in terms of I, I, I am highly inspired to write right now. I really feel the urge, the sort of the Asimov-like urge to sit down and type. Um, and I've got a very specific idea of what I want to write about. And I don't know how I'm going to pull that off. Okay, I have no idea how that would work given that, you know, I've got a 90-minute talk that was highly visual. Can I even turn that into a book? I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. Well, what the what would that look like and what would be the benefit? You know, what would I be adding? Or what's, you know, what's that experience like reading the book? Or is it a companion? Is it a totally standalone thing? Does it go with the course? You know, I don't know. I'm still, still trying to figure that part out. Um, but, you know, that's the book that I want to take a stab at. So I'm going to stop working on what I was calling book one. And I'm going to start working on what I was calling book two. And, you know, I'm going to enter what I'll call pre-production where uh, I'm going to ignore the advice of Dean Wesley Smith, um, which might be great advice for writing a story. I'm not just going to sit down and start typing wildly. Uh, I'm going to think quite hard about what I want to put in there. And then also I'm going to watch, well, first of all, I think I'll write down my ideas and then I'll watch the talk and, and see what's in there and what makes sense. Um, and I, I probably read the blog posts that people wrote based on it to see what they f felt was interesting. Um, you know, what, what do they care? What did they get out of it that they, they found compelling? Like why, what, uh, inspired them or what are the things of, of the talk they, they found beautiful or interesting? So, you know, uh, start, start doing sort of this ideation phase and thinking a little bit about, you know, what, what I might write and, um, you know, just get some sense. Is this a long book? Is it a short book? I don't know. You know, what do I physically want it to look like? Um, all those sorts of things. And, you know, like I said, I was getting stuck in terms of every time I wanted to write or think about writing, it's like, well, do I have to make a video about it? So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work on this and uh, you know, I, I feel like sharing, at least right now, I feel like sharing what I'm doing. So, um, you know, I want to share uh, the process of writing this book and maybe I'll actually write in the open at least some, but I don't want to get to the point where um, I'm not writing because I'm not, I can't make a video that day or something. I don't want to do that. And if and if to get unstuck writing, I have to sit there and scribble on a pad of paper in a coffee shop for four hours, you know, I, I want to do that. So I will share what I think makes sense and what it can. And, I'm, you know, if you all have ideas or encouragement for what might make sense, either in a book form or you know, a course um, based on the most beautiful program ever written, or if you want to share with me what you found interesting about that talk, if you did, or inspiring, or what you didn't, you know, um, I'd appreciate that. And 
Yeah, I, I, I noticed for license um, how Abelson has a new book from MIT Press. It was under Creative Commons uh, under the uh, No Derivatives, No, no Commercial Use license. Um, and, you know, Hal is one of the creators of Creative Commons or one of the, the people who, who moved it in the early days is my understanding. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious if that's part of that new MIT open access thing. So, you know, I'll think about the license. I, I don't know if I'll write and reach out to uh, MIT Press right now. Um, I've never done that before. I've all, you know, the, the books I've written before, I wrote them with Dan and other co-authors, but Dan knew how to navigate that. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to write a book and then go to the publisher. So I don't know. I mean, I guess I could do the whole thing and go to MIT Press and ask if they want to advance and talk about the open access and all that. I mean, if they want to give me an advance, I don't know. Advances scare me. Committing to doing a book that I don't know if I can do a good job writing scares me. So I don't know. It's probably better to just write it. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking about the writing. Um, I'm going to start start working on it. I think I can still write in the open, but, you know, I might write a little bit and then commit a chapter to get or something. I might, I might not, uh, I might not do all the writing in real time and I might not record the writing in real time. I'm not sure. I mean, to be honest, I, I still type so slowly that making a video of myself, uh, typing at two words a minute is, <laughs> that does make me self-conscious. I don't know if writing in the open in terms of, you know, my embarrassing grammar gaffes or whatever. I don't know if that bothers me too much, but I just, uh, I haven't gotten over the, the how slow I am with Dvorak. Um, so anyway, I'll figure it out, but I want to make progress and work on this book with all my might. So that's uh, what I want to do. And, you know, we'll see see how the book shapes up and uh i've had at least one friend tell me that you know they thought the it'd be impossible to turn the book into a talk or at least very hard um that, that they're just kind of different medium and that that's totally possible it may be possible that um the talk can succeed in a way that a book can't i don't know that, that is possible but i'm not sure of that and probably more likely it's more like some people would prefer book form and some people would prefer a talk form and some people would prefer a bunch of videos and that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a one size fits all for, for books or videos or anything else. So anyway, that's what I've been uh, thinking about and that's what I'm going to going to work on um so you might see some commits and i hope i will at least periodically give updates on what i'm doing mm. happy for your feedback uh but i'm not planning to record everything i might record some writing sessions or what i'm thinking about but that was the other thing when i was writing i spent a lot of time explaining you know to the, to the audience you know, what I was doing and what I was going to write about. It's like, yeah, I think I just need to, to write. Um, that's, that's a problem I've been having just getting started and working. So, um, maybe over time I'll, I'll work my way up to a Pulp Fiction writer. I'll work my way up to the confidence of, you know, Harlan Ellison who would work in the, the bookshop and type out page after page and display the pages in the window as he was finishing typing those. Maybe I'll do that, but you know, I also wouldn't be surprised if there are parts of that book that I'd have to rewrite five times to, to feel like I'm on the right track. Well, whatever. I'll try to, try to figure it out. And you know, maybe the entire experiment is, well, that was a better, better uh, talk than book. That might be a possibility, I wouldn't be surprised if some people would still like a book. So, you know, I, I want to finish the book as best as I can. Um, I don't want to take, 
18 months to do so, like for the first edition of the Reason Schemer, or 13 years, like for the second edition of the Reason Schemer. I mean, this is something where I don't have to invent a new programming language or anything like that. I've already given the talk. Um, YouTube didn't seem to have a transcript of it. There's probably some way for me to get the audio and feed it to a transcription service or something. Eh, you know, I guess worst comes to worst if I wanted to. I could write down the transcript. Um, but, you know, I basically know this material like the back of my hand at the macro level. Um, you know, of course, all the details go as arbitrarily deep as you want. It's not like I'm an expert on every single thing I talked about. Okay, well, that's enough of me gabbing. But that's what I'm thinking about as far as uh, book writing. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll see see where where it turns out. Okay? All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.